Evaporation is all around us. It's what drives the water cycle, giving magnificent clouds the water they need to form. It's the reason you cool down when you sweat, and can even produce beautiful crystals. It is a truly important part of this world, and in this video I'll be explaining what evaporation is and why evaporation happens, and hopefully you'll be able to explain it too by the end of this video. I'd like to introduce evaporation in a way you might not have looked at it before, because we're all very familiar with the concept of a liquid turning to a gas. But why is evaporation any different from boiling, and how can it happen at a lower temperature than boiling? To start with, we need to review the kinetic model of matter, which states that solids are made up of particles fixed in position and vibrating, liquids made up of particles which are free to move but are still bound to each other, and gases being made up of particles free to move but with empty space between them. To explain evaporation, we first need to consider a liquid and what we mean by the temperature of it. Temperature can be thought of as the average energy of the particles in a substance, put simply, the averages of the speeds of the particles. Liquids and gases with higher temperatures have their particles travelling at higher velocities, while liquids and gases with lower temperatures are made up of slower moving particles. But in order for evaporation to occur, we need to turn our attention to the word average in our definition. This implies that particles are not all travelling at one speed, but are in fact travelling at a huge range of different speeds, and thus have different energies. Think of it like watching the start of a marathon. There are many different people setting off with many different speeds, but the average speed of all these people will give an average time of around 4.5 hours. Therefore, if a particle has enough speed and is heading towards the surface of a liquid, it may have enough energy to break free of the attraction between it and the rest of the particles, and so enter into the gaseous phase. This is what we mean by evaporation, and can occur at low temperatures due to the fact that there are many particles with lower energies than the high energy particles escaping from the liquid, thus giving a lower average temperature. This is the reason why water evaporates faster in a warmer environment. A higher proportion of particles have enough energy to escape, as the average energy of the particles has increased. If you keep on increasing the temperature, the particles do not even have to reach the surface in order to turn into gas, and so form bubbles in the liquid. You may recognise this from the kettle bubbling when it is finished, and for good reason. This is the point at which the liquid is boiling. If you apply these concepts to the surrounding world, you can see that evaporation plays an important role in many processes, including the sun heating the sea in order to give water vapour. You may have also noticed that puddles don't just sit there, and while they are not boiling, they do in fact decrease in volume over time, which is due to the water gradually evaporating out of the puddle. You can even explain why sweating cools you down. The most energetic particles in sweat are able to escape from the liquid, which reduces the average energy of the sweat, so energy has been transferred from you to the particles, meaning you have cooled down. So it seems that evaporation is not just as simple as liquid spontaneously turning into gases, but can be described by some fairly logical physics. As ever, thank you for watching, and if you're interested about more of the workings of our surrounding world, click here for more day-to-day -day science.